but we celebrate God in this place today. The fact that we made it over to 2022, celebrate the fact that he has done great things in all of our lives. It could have gone another way. We didn't have to make it, but his grace fell upon us and he's blessed us to see a brand new year. Well, new covenant, good to see you. As we kick off this first Sunday in this year, uh, we've got members in our family uh, that we need to lift in prayer. Uh, Minister Arthur Powell and that family, bereaved in the passing of his mother, Suzette Williams. Uh, those services are going to be held on Wednesday, January 5th at Gatlin Funeral Home. And then Reverend Stanley Watson and his family, bereaved in the passing of his brother, Jeffrey Watkins. And that service is going to be held on Friday the 7th at the Callahan Funeral Home. Let's lift them in prayer. Listen, their name's on the list today, but your name could be on the list next week. And the same care, compassion, and love that you would want to receive from this family called New Covenant. Let's make sure that we exhibit that in the lives of our brothers and sisters. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you for your keeping power. <clears throat> we thank you for your sustaining grace. We thank you for how you have met every one of our needs. God, we've not gone lacking. And we thank you for it. God, so many around us have, have suffered in so many ways, but you allowed us to make it over the hurdles and the obstacles and the barriers. You've allowed us to make it over into a brand new year. God, we simply pause to say thank you. Those who are here in the sanctuary and those who are in the virtual sanctuary, we've come to celebrate you and to lift your name on high today. There's an audience of one. We recognize that all that we have comes from you. And we simply thank you. We recognize we didn't earn it nor deserve it, yet every time we turn around, you keep doing great things for us. We bless you for it, God. You know and you alone know what lies ahead. We trust you. We have faith in you that you'll equip us and that you'll prepare us as we encounter whatever life has for us as we enter this new year. But God, we enter this year with expectations. We enter this year with hope. We enter this year with joy. We're looking forward to how you're going to move in us and with us and through us. How you're going to use us as your instruments in this place called the earth realm. God, as we move through this worship experience today, we pray that a heart is touched, that a tear-stained eye is dried up, that a broken heart is mended back together. God, speak to us today. Allow us to have an experience with you today that changes and transforms our life. That's our prayer. That's our desire. That we would leave from this worship different than the way in which we've come. We celebrate you in advance for all that's about to happen in us today and with us today. This is our prayer that we lift in Jesus' name. The saints ought to shout, Amen. Again, we welcome you in this place today and we want to pause to make sure and check and see if there are any visitors in the house if you're a visitor if you're not a member of new covenant if you would just elevate your hand all right we see a visitor in the back thank you sir appreciate your presence in this place today you being here makes the service all the more special and meaningful listen we gonna wave it folk we ain't gonna spread no virus on people so keep your distance but welcome to new covenant
another hand for yourself and again for our visitor. Thank you, sir. So appreciate you being here. You can take your seats. Again, so glad to see so many of your faces in this place today. But this is the last time we're going to see each other for a minute. It's shutting down after the first Sunday. Senior pastor, as if individuals would gather in this place for the first Sunday to kick off the year. But after this, we're going back virtual. And so moving forward until further notice, until you hear from him, all of our worship experiences will be in that digital platform. So make sure that you get your grandkids to show you how to get on YouTube and Facebook and on the stream uh, so that you can plug into our worship experiences Sunday after Sunday. Well, Amen. the choir's going to come and minister to us. I'm going to give you a quick Sunday school lesson, and we'll be on to the crib together. <laughs>
your life. The ups and the downs, the positives and the negatives. Somebody ought to be able to testify that he truly is wonderful. The amount of grace that he's shown you, he took you from was to is. You ought to be able to say he's wonderful. You were able to make it when you didn't know how you were going to make it. You ought to be able to shout, he's wonderful. When life looked like it was over, there was no more rope to hold on to, but yet you made it forward. You ought to be able to shout, he's wonderful. stuff that he's done is not that we earned it or deserved it, but it's simply because he's wonderful that he keeps on blessing us and keeps on blessing us and keeps on blessing us and keeps on blessing us. Those of you in the digital space, listen, go ahead and do me a favor. I need you to be a digital disciple, an electronic evangelist. You need to like, comment, share, like, comment, and share. Hit the at symbol and tag somebody. If you're on Facebook, invite them into the worship experience today. Somebody that's in your circle might need to experience what we're experiencing in this place so that change and transformation can take place in their lives. We celebrate our senior pastor. Can we celebrate him today in his absence? Well, if you've come equipped with your own personal copy of the kingdom's constitution, why don't you join me in the book of Luke? Luke, the seventh chapter, is where we'll hang out for a few minutes today. Luke, the seventh chapter, verses 36 to 39, and then we'll make our exit at verse 50. Luke, chapter 7, verse 36 through 39. If you've got it, say, I got it. If you need a minute, say, hold on. If you can't find it, say, I'm going to Sunday school. I'll be reading from the NIV today. Luke 7, 36 to 39 reads as thus. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Verse 50, Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. For our time of sharing today, allow me to drop this homiletical headline above the text. Headline reading, climate change. Climate change. You might have your seats. Released December 25th, 1941, Irvin Berling's White Christmas was used to shine a light in a dark moment in American history. As just 18 days prior, the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service engaged in a surprise military attack and strike on Pearl Harbor. This song was used to evoke visions of holidays past, an attempt to change the climate of grief in a country that was now marred with mourning. And while the song possessed a patriotic purpose, the sad reality is that it was also the product of personal pain. As the lyrics centered around the death of Berlin's infant son, who'd passed away on Christmas morning 13 years prior. It's been suggested, Dean Callahan, that in penning these lyrics, it served as a coping mechanism for this grieving father, a means by which to shift his personal climate of pain. Speaking of a white Christmas, those seem harder and harder and harder to come by these days, Miss Allen. 
as a result of, of the impact of climate change. Rising temperatures have been eating away at the chances for snowfall on Christmas Day over the past decade or so. The science suggests that if we don't become more proactive in reducing our CO2 emissions over the next few years, pretty soon we'll have to rewrite the lyrics of those songs. Lyrics that will now say, I'm dreaming of a warm Christmas, <laughs> unlike the ones I used to know. The interesting thing about climate change, New Covenant, is that it, 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 the, the shift, it can be so subtle that by the time we look up, what we get is much different than what we expected. This is the case for nearly 10 million Americans who live in northern climates. As the season shifts into fall and winter, and the amount of daylight that we experience diminishes and is shortened, many individuals find themselves with increased appetites and decreased co concentration. Energy levels are depleted, and regardless of the number of hours that we get to sleep, we still can find it difficult to, to get up in the morning. The climate of your life is cloudy as a depressed state now hovers upon you until spring or summer arrives. Now, now sure, all of this could be caused by the various stresses that we face in life, from work uh, to the stress of holidays to crazy family members to cold weather, and I get it, I'm no medical doctor, but all of this sounds a whole lot like sad. Seasonal affective disorder is also commonly known as the winter blues. And so you're probably saying to yourself, Stephen, those, those symptoms sound familiar. Sounds like something that I've experienced, but how can I in fact know if it's sad that I'm dealing with in my life? Well, that's a good question. And the great answer is this, time. Because time will tell. If you notice that over the course of three years or more, that there's this recurrent theme in your mood when the season shifts, that's a good sign that in fact you're suffering from sad. And the covenant, here's what we have to understand about climates. Climates don't change minute to minute. Climates don't change hour to hour. Climates don't change day to day or season to season, but climate is determined by the average of the weather over time and space. Y'all not feeling me, let me come this way. If climate is going to change, there will need to be both a natural and an anthropogenic factor or a human-induced factor that will contribute to the climate change. And as we've entered into this new year of 2022, many of us have done so with the hope and the expectation of some climate change. We hope that the climate of police brutality and criminality against black people and brown people will change so that all people are seen and treated as human beings. We hope that the climate of the justice system will change enforcing accountability upon cops as swiftly and severely as it does upon common citizens. We, we hope that the climate of black America will change from competitive to collaborative because if us don't look out for us and support us and shop with us and push us, us ain't gonna make it. We, we hope that the climate of corporate America will change regarding gender pay gaps as well as equity and inclusion and advancement for people of color in the C-suite. We hope that the climate will change and continue to change regarding the importance of mental health within communities of color. We hope that the political climate will change from prioritizing profits to prioritizing people. We hope that the climate of newsrooms will change from peddling propaganda to telling the truth. We hope that the climate of doubt and fear and apprehension in our minds will change so that you and I can stop living beneath our purpose and our potential. We hope that the climate of COVID and all of its bastard variants will change so that we can get a reprieve from the death and the destruction that it's drowning us in. 
And I think that on today, we can all agree that from the professional to the personal, to the political, to the environment, climate change is needed. And climate change is necessary. But for the climate to change, it's going to require the active participation of those that exist within these various ecosystems. Y'all looking at me funny. So let me see if I can lay the hay where the horses can get to it. Change is a verb. And if nothing changes, <clears throat> nothing changes. And as we penetrate the periphery of this particular pericope, we find a savior, we find a Simon, and we find a sinner sitting around a dinner table. I wish I had some Bible readers in the house today. The text says that while Jesus is reclined and relaxed in this woman's presence, Simon is irritated and agitated. His pride, here in the text, leads him to see himself as superior. He can only see this woman as she was, but not as she is. And Dean Whitehead, I wonder if this scene was set up here in the text like this to remind the deep and the super spiritual and the judgmental and the hypocritical saints to relax. I notice as I've read through the text that sinners and murderers and thieves and prostitutes, they were all strangely attracted to Jesus. And Jesus was comfortable in their presence. Yet these are the same individuals that the followers of Jesus push back against. Th these are the same individuals that the followers of Jesus want to disassociate themselves from. And I wonder, if Christ didn't trip over their failures in their life, why are we tripping so hard? We've got to learn to see people as Jesus sees people. Oh, let me help you because love sees beneath the surface of a person's sins and listens for the deeper cry of their soul. And there's a reason why the worst sinners in the world often make for the best Christians. Here's the reason why. Because sinners know they sinners. It's a saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost folk who are living disillusioned lives about the sin that exists within our lives. And the more that we realize and recognize our sinfulness, the greater our love is for Christ as we accept his forgiveness. Sinners make for good Christians because they come to God knowing that he has done some amazing things to change and transform their lives. And they move forward trying to change and transform the lives of others. And this encounter here in the text in Simon's house God changes the tense of this woman's life. Here, she goes from a was to an is. She, she was a sinner. But by the time we get to verse 50, she is saved. Y'all not feeling me here. She, she was a sinner at the beginning of the text. But by the time we get to the end, she is saved. And there ought to be some people that are testifying in this place right now because you've seen how God has changed and transformed your life from a was to an is. Uh, we don't have to tell all the business in the place today, but you know what your was was and you now know what your is is. She was a sinner, but she is saved. Her life experiences a climate change. This woman comes to Jesus and she sees herself in his light. And it's interesting that out of all the people who came to that dinner that night, the only one who left forgiven was the one that acknowledged that she was a sinner. <laughs> Commitment is a, it's a positive attribute that all of us should, should endeavor to maintain. But commitment to things that hinder that harm or that harness our potential and our possibilities is an act of negligence. Th this woman in the text, notice now, she isn't given a name, but she is given a label. Her reputation as a sinner has stained the mind of the members of her community as she finds herself subjected to the savagery of their scrutiny. And while many 
have ascribed a sexual context to her sin. Calvin, that's simply an unfair and an unfounded suggestion. No, nowhere do you see in the text any evidence that her sin was connected to sex. I don't know what her sin was, but the fact that it's left unnamed leaves room for you and I to use this text as a mirror. Because someone needs to be reminded today that counting other sins doesn't make you a saint. You, you missed it. You, you, you got your halo on today, so let me come this way. Just because you sin differently from somebody else doesn't make their sin more sinful. Listen, it's not about the category of sin or even the caliber of sin, but how deeply you feel it when you sin, that matters the most. And climate change requires the active participation of those within an ecosystem. And if you and I are going to see the climate of our lives change, we cannot allow the inertia of a problematic past to continue to drag us down a faulty path. The author, Aubrey de Graff, is quoted as saying, don't cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. This woman in the text, she demonstrates here that change is a verb. Notice again how she starts out a sinner in verse 37, but she's saved in verse 50. And I see here in the text three elements that she implements into her climate change process that you and I can likewise engage as we step into this new year. First thing that I notice here, Deacon Allen, is number one, I see curiosity. She clearly heard some things about this man named Jesus. And when she hears that he's coming to town for dinner at Simon's house, she takes advantage of this opportunity to be in his presence. Her curiosity led her out of the shadows. Her, her curiosity caused her to come out of her comfort zone. Her curiosity led her to risk ridicule and see, sit in the seat of scrutiny, all out of curiosity concerning being connected here to Christ. And not only do I see her curiosity, second, I see her creativity. And you've got to understand something about this region of the world. Hospitality is huge in this area. And noticing that Jesus had not been properly attended to, she becomes proactive and creative. Simon didn't provide water for Jesus to wash his feet, so she provided her tears. Simon didn't provide a towel for Jesus to dry off his feet, so she lets down her hair. Simon didn't greet Jesus with a kiss, so she keeps on kissing his feet out of reverence. Simon didn't put oil on Jesus' head, but she breaks out a costly bottle of perfume and pours out her gratitude on Jesus. Creativity is simply connecting old dots in new ways. And here in the text, this woman engages in some creativity. Now, not only was there curiosity, not only was there creativity, but third and finally, she had some courage. This woman rejected, risked rejection and humiliation in approaching Jesus and substituting for Simon. And when we look at change and consider change as we enter this new year, we recognize that change will cause some disruption. No matter how much you know that there's a need for climate change, know that there's going to be a grieving process as well. And that grieving process oftentimes either leads us to go back to familiar bondage or stand still in stagnation. And in this process of climate change, you've got to exhibit some courage, some courage to tell the truth, some courage to make some tough decisions, some courage to make mistakes and learn from the mistakes, some courage to say no, some courage to show up every day regardless of what you're facing. If we're going to make climate change, there's got to be curiosity. There's got to be creativity. And third, there's got to be some courage. Dean Whitehead, it was after going eight and eight in the 2007 season that the New York Giants caused a stir in the Super Bowl of 2008. And they caused a stir because they defeated the undefeated New England Patriots. 
asked how they did it, head coach Tom Coughlin said, simply by being nice. It was after the 2007 season that the coach met with a group of his veteran players and they informed him that he yelled too much, that he communicated too little, and that he listened barely at all. Coach Coughlin had spent three years trying to change the players on that team and it didn't work. So he decided that he would try a different route and he would change himself. And when he changed himself, that's what caused the climate change on the team and changed his players. Here, coach recognized that change is a verb. And like the Giants, you and I can also walk away with the championship in our personal lives, in our professional lives, and even in our spiritual lives. Ah, if we'd engage the curiosity and the creativity and the courage to change our climate. And there's a brilliant author who wrote a book entitled Mirror Moments. He said there in that amazing book that he wrote that if you'll change what's within, you'll ultimately be able to change what's around. New Covenant, the question that we must answer as we depart from this place today it's number one, do we want a climate change? Number two, what are we willing to do to make sure that climate change happens? As we recognize that change is a verb. Father, we bless you and we thank you for the example that you show us here in this text with this unnamed woman about the change that can and will take place in our lives if we actively engage the ecosystem. Father, as we enter this new year, we do so with hope and expectation for a bright future. It's our desire, God, that you would do some amazing things in us and with us and through us. Ch change us spiritually, uh, change us professionally, change us personally, change us in our family dynamics. God, shift us, continue to, to mold us and make us into the person that you would desire us to be. God, we recognize that there's divine sovereignty, but there's also some human responsibility. There's a part that we have to play in this process. Allow us to function in a place where we have the curiosity, we have the creativity, and we have the courage to do what needs to be done on our part to bring about climate change in our lives. Thank you in advance for how we're going to look when we come through this. Thank you in advance for how much better we're going to be, how much more loving we're going to be, how much more like you we'll be on the other side of this climate change. Thank you for taking us from was to is and continue to take us from the wases that now exist to the is's that will exist in the future. Thank you for your transformative power in our lives. God bless us as we bless you in all that we do. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Just in case there's one today that needs to make the climate change of having a personal relationship with Jesus, we want to extend that invitation to you today. Maybe you've been living life, doing things your own way, and you recognize it. I've tried it my way, but maybe there's a better way. And I want to suggest to you today that there is. Inviting Christ into your life allowing him to be your Lord and your leader, your Lord and your Savior. Recognizing that if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. We want to give you this opportunity to accept Christ and to invite him in. Maybe you're here in this place today and you need to make that decision or maybe you're in the virtual space and you want to make the decision. There's a comment section there. You can drop in the comment section, I want to be saved. I want to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. You can reach out to the church and someone from the team will walk you through the process if you're in that digital space. But if you're in this place today and you want to make that decision, we want you to come down now to the altar. No pressure, no stress. All of us that are here have been in that same place where you are. And it doesn't matter how bad you've messed up, how much of a sinner you've been labeled as, God still loves you and we still love you. And we want to do life with you. We want to walk with you as you make this climate change in your life. So do me a favor, even through your mask, look at that person sitting on your row and ask them, are you saved? 
Ask him, do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Have you surrendered your life to him? Second question, ask them, do they have a church home? Not just a place where they're going, but a place where they're growing. And listen, even in that digital space, we'd love to have you connect with this place called New Covenant. Our senior pastor would love to serve as your senior pastor. And you can say, hey, I may live in another state, I may live in another country, but I love the ministry of New Covenant, and I want to be a part of that community of believers. You can do that. We've got members all across the globe. Again, you can reach out, drop that comment, let us know that you'd like to connect with this church, be a part of this body of believers. We'd be excited to welcome you into this place called New Covenant. Well, I pray no one has come, so we celebrate the fact that everybody has connected with Christ in that way, and they're plugged into a church home where they're growing and where God is speaking to them. As you came in today, you should have received your communion condiments. Everyone have theirs? If not, elevate your hand. We've got some amazing ushers, and they'll be happy to serve you. There are a few down front ushers. Thank you, ushers, for your service, for being on post today. Musicians, thank you for being on post. Praise team, thank you for all that makes service possible. Deacons, a janitorial team, everybody, Lottie Dottie, and everybody sound people thank you so much for being in place today uh, that we might have this worship experience we've still got two hands that's three hands four hands down front ushers pause now to reminisce and reflect upon all that Christ did for us there on Calvary's cross he did it not because again we earned it or deserved it but because he had love for us love that looked beyond our sinful nature to hear the cry the deep cry of our soul we take now this bread as it represents the broken battered and bruised body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he willingly subjected himself and submitted himself to pain and to torture for you and for me. He did it for us. And so we eat now, reminiscing and reverencing the fact that Jesus took the hit so that you and I didn't have to. Let's eat together. This cup represents the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was shed blood and not spilled blood because if it had been spilled blood, that would have been an accident. But he did what he did on purpose for you and for me. As he hung there on Calvary's cross and they placed those thorns on his head and the blood came streaming down. They pierced him in his side and blood came streaming down. They drove spikes through his wrists and his ankles and blood came streaming down. And that blood still runs to reach us wherever we are. Doesn't matter how low you get in life, the blood still has power to reach you. Doesn't matter how high you get, the blood can still come up there and get you. The blood heals, the blood saves, the blood delivers, the blood justifies. The blood still works. We take now and we drink of this blood, reflecting upon what Christ did for you and for me. As we engage in this, this holy sacrament, we recognize that even doing this doesn't make us sinless. But the fact of remembering what Christ did for us ought to cause us to sin less. Y'all to catch that on your way home. It makes no sense to hang him back on Calvary's cross when he already died for you. We ought to do better because we know better. Well, listen, I've enjoyed being in worship with you today. I hope that you got something out of this experience today that will help you as you move forward in life in this new year to create climate change in all areas of your life. Now, we're leaving, but we're not doing that without giving first, amen? As we recognize that giving is a part of our worship, even those of you in the digital space, our platforms are open and available for you to give. Let's kick off the new year right. 
we get resolutions about what we going to do and how we going to change. You already said last year, I'm going to eat better. And you didn't already push that off to Monday as if the new year hadn't already started. Don't do that to God. Let's give to God what we owe him. Let, let's sacrifice. Let's give. If you need an offering envelope, our ushers can get that to you. Uh, whatever you all's normal protocol for giving on the way out is, we want you to follow, excuse me, follow that. And again, for those of you who give digitally, thank you for making your gifts on those various platforms. Let's look to the Lord in prayer as we prepare to depart from this place. Lord, we thank you for keeping us. We thank you for sustaining us. We thank you for covering us with your grace and with your love. Thank you for the word that was shared today, for the songs that were sung today, for the encouragement that was given to someone's life. We thank you for those who may have come in contact with you on the digital platform today for the first time they had an encounter with you and their life will never now be the same. Thank you for how you use us to impact congregation and community. Bless these sweet people of the place called New Covenant. Bless this place called New Covenant that it will continue to be a bright light in a dark and dismal world to do ministry that ministers to the misery of the masses with the mercy of the master. God, now take us from this place, but never from your presence. Give us safety as we travel on the snow-driven streets. God, protect us from COVID and its bastard variants. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, as we depart from this place, make sure that we're following the instructions of our ushers. We're going to maintain our distance, not get anybody sick around us. And y'all have an amazing week. Make this the best week of your life. Make this the best month of your life. Make this the best year of your life. Ahala. Thank you for joining us in worship today. You can view all of our services live each Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our church website, www.newcovenantmbc.com. You can also catch us every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. on Chicago Cable Channel 25. We invite you to join with us in person each Sunday at 8 o'clock a.m. for our Super Soul Life Lessons and at 9 o'clock a.m. for our worship service. If this ministry has impacted your life in any way, we ask that you consider contributing to our ministry financially. You may give via the Givelify app, by mailing your donation to Post Office Box 198217, Chicago, Illinois 60619, or by bringing your offerings to the church at 754 East 77th Street. We thank you so much for joining us in worship today, and we want to remind you that we love you and we are praying for you. Be blessed.